Hello, I thought I'd make a quick video just to share with you some of the activities you might like to do with your child to help develop their reading over the summer. This video is for if your child is in year one and moving on into year two. So first of all, we'd just like to say that we do want your children to have a really good break over the summer holidays. So the idea of this video is just to give you some ideas for really quick 10 minute activities that you can do with your child just to keep their reading going over the summer holidays. But it's nothing that we want them to spend ages and ages on because it is important that they have a rest as well. I thought I'd start by sharing with you the colour order of our books so that you've got some idea of where your child is at and then also it will just help you in case you want to access some of our some of the e-books on Oxford Owl over the holidays you'll have some idea of which e-books you might be wanting to look at so if your child has been coming back into school then we will have sent them with a couple of books already and that really is your starting point is to read those books and I'll share with you in a minute some activities that you can do within those books. So what I'll do now is I'll just show you the colour order just so that you get some idea of where your child is at. Okay, so it starts with red books. So it's red, green, purple, pink, orange, yellow, blue, and then finally grey is the last one. So your child will have started these books in reception and then in year one, what we're aiming for is these blue books here. And within these books, um, we're really developing in year one, your child's fluency. So by the end of year one, we're kind of aiming for about 60 words per minute within the blue books. So if your child was reading some of the story inside the blue book, and if you put a timer on for a minute, You'd be hoping that within that minute they would read round about 60 words. So that might be something that you could have a little go at over the holidays is just now and then just timing to see whereabouts your child is at in terms of their fluency. And it doesn't have to be something you tell them about, it could just be something that you do yourself um, without them even noticing because um, we don't want them to feel under pressure to do this. So what I'll do now is I'll just share with you some of the things you can do with inside these storybooks. On the first page we have the speed sounds and what we usually do with these sounds in school is we would just get the children to say them so they'd say f, 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 oh, 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 mm, mm, mm. and you can see that for some of the sounds there are several different ways of spelling those sounds so it's just getting them used to seeing those different ways that the sound can be made and actually the ones that are circled are the ones that are going to appear in the book so it's really important that they know in this book there's going to be the c and the e together but it's going to make the s sound so they just go s s s s and they could go along and do them all and then also what's quite helpful to do is also to point at them out of order so that they don't just get used to the order of the sounds. And then over on this page is the vowels and we've got here some of the set two and set three sounds. So for example here we've got oi which they learn in set two and then we've got the other way of spelling oi which is in set three. So a good starting point is just practicing these speed sounds on this page. And then if we turn over the page we've got our story green words 
And these are the words that to begin with, your child might be Fred talking out loud. And you can see we've also got the words that they would say in syllables and it shows you how your child will break those words down into syllables um, and also some words where it's a root word and then a suffix so for example we've got for example we have got prance and then pranced then over on this page, we've got some words that it might be good just to go with through your child, go through. We've got some words that it might just be good to have a look at with your child just to see if they understand the meaning of the words. Then we've got our red words and these are the words that your child can't red talk and that they have to learn by sight. And for some of the books, it might look like this as a grid. And for some of them, they're just written as a list. So if you had a book like this where they're written as a grid, um, what we sometimes do in school is they pick a row or a column and they see how quickly they can say the words. And these are words that they just have to learn by sight. So it's a lot of repetition with these words. And then finally, we go on to the story. Now, the first time they read the story, it will be for accuracy. So there might be a few words that it takes them a little bit longer to get. And so they'd read through the book. And then after you've read the book a few times, so this might be on day two or three that you start to look at this, there are some questions to talk about where your child will find the answers in the book and then some questions to read and answer. And the ones to read and answer are actually the ones that the children could do by their set by themselves so they could actually read those questions and try and find their answers for themselves. Then at the back of the book we've got the speedy green words so these are the words that you would want your child to be saying Fred in their head so saying the sounds in their head and then saying the word out loud and what we do in school with these sometimes is the child would pick a row or a column and see how quickly they can say the words and these words really help to develop your child's fluency because the quicker they can say these the quicker they're going to read the text within the book so it might be useful to spend a couple of days just actually practicing these words before they have another read of the story and then you can assess once they've read it a couple of times then hopefully they should then be a quicker pace when they're reading the story for a second or a third time. Um, when we're talking about fluency we're talking about the children starting to add expression to when they're speaking and they would be hesitating less before they come to words and they would just be reading at a quicker pace so that 60 words per minute is what we're really looking for and anything above that is brilliant. And so they are the main things that you can do within the book. So it doesn't necessarily have to be reading the book every day. It could be doing some of the words at the back or the front so that you can break it up and it's not too repetitive. What you could also do is maybe read one book one day, read another, another day and kind of come back to the book at a later date. Um, so don't feel like you have to just get them to read the same text over and over. And then finally, over the summer, Read by Tink are going to keep their YouTube videos going. So lots of you I know have already been accessing them and have found them really useful. In year one, we focus on the set two and set three sounds. And probably for most of them, it'll be the set three sounds that you might want to just keep on going with. And again, this doesn't have to be something done every day. It could just be now and then, just dipping into it, just to keep up your child's knowledge of those set two and set three sounds. And what I've got here is just a schedule of different things that 
they are doing. Now it says until the 31st of July up here, but Readwright Inc have said that they will be keeping this going throughout August. So there is the option there of doing bits of this. Again, it's not something we want the children to be spending ages on. It's just every now and then just to keep it going. So I'll just quickly run through the different activities that you might want to be doing with your child. So we've got the set two speed sounds and the set three speed sounds. We've also got, if your child's already really confident with both their set two and set three sounds, what they might like to do rather than those, because there's no point in them repeating them if they're really confident on them, you might want to look at the reading longer words video so this includes words with those set three sounds but they are longer words which sometimes they find a little bit more tricky so it might be that you focus on those rather than the set two and set three sounds then they do red words and there's a red words one and a red words two but for most of the children it will be the red words two that you want to focus on so that's looking at those tricky words that they can't Fred talk that they need to learn so if you notice that that's one of the things that your child's finding difficult in the stories it could be that you do those red words two videos and then finally if you felt like you wanted to do a little bit of writing they do hold a sentence one and hold a sentence two. So hold a sentence one is for the children that are on green, purple, pink and orange books and hold a sentence two is for those children on yellow, blue and grey books. So these are just a few activities that you could do over the summer holidays if you wanted to and I know lots of you have said you found them really useful and there's lots of children that have used them where we've seen a real difference in their reading so that's just there as an option like I said we do want the children to have a really lovely summer holiday so it's not something if your child's not enjoying it and finding it really tricky then maybe just focus on reading the books and there's also the e-books online on Oxford Owl that you could access so if you finish your books that your child's brought home from school and um, then another really good resource is the ebooks online that you could do.